There have been a ton of updates and new features in ChatGPT over the past year, and the last couple weeks even. Custom instructions can instantly improve every chat you have. Vision has been hugely helpful. Plugins were overhyped and have become irrelevant. Custom GPTs were the biggest update. I'll cover the ways I use them and how to build your own. And the brand new ability to call those GPTs within any chat, which is a total game changer. Plus there's a ton of other hidden features I rarely see mentioned. Videos have come out about a lot of this stuff along the way, but the information gets really spread out that way. I wanna condense it all down into one video with with everything you need to master ChatGPT in 2024. With an all-encompassing video being the goal, I figured I should start with some top prompting tips before jumping into all the new features. For the majority of users, you don't need any elaborate prompt engineering, but better inputs will give you better outputs. And just a few tips and best practices can greatly improve those outputs. Meta recently released a guide to prompt engineering. There have been others before it covering this same information. This is just a recent version. I wanna break that down really simply. It's easy to apply most of it. Then I'll add a few more tips of my own. This first part you could summarize as be specific. They break that down further into stylization, formatting, and restrictions. What were the biggest AI breakthroughs of 2023? Sending a prompt like that is pretty open-ended and you don't really know how it will respond. So I'll add, give them as five bullet points, one sentence long each for a layperson. Stylize is the for a layperson that lets it know to speak in simple terms. If I'd written for a machine learning engineer, it would add more technical language. With formatting, I used bullet points. That could also be things like headings and subheadings, a blog article, a tweet. It can also do more difficult things like create tables or write code. If you're a plus user, this can be extended with some really cool things like mind maps and flow charts and some various types of charts and things for data analysis. We'll use all those later. For restrictions, one I use a lot since ChatGPT can be very verbose. I'll add, explain it in one sentence or two to three sentences or a paragraph, depending. That is super helpful. You don't have to use all three of those in every prompt. I just wanted to knock them all out with one example. Another technique that would be under stylization is role prompting. Giving ChatGPT a role or identity is an easy way to give context of how you'd like it to answer. Then it will retain that identity throughout the conversation. Say we want to explain string theory in one paragraph. At the beginning, I'll add, you are a theoretical physicist speaking to senior physicists. So I'll send that, then I will edit the prompt. You are an elementary school teacher speaking to your students. If we look at these next to each other, that's obviously a massive difference. This one talks about supersymmetry, a hypothetical symmetry between bosons and fermions. The other one uses the analogy of a guitar. I find this particularly helpful when discussing topics I'm familiar with. Then it doesn't approach it as if speaking to a general audience and explain simple terms. Another that's really helpful is to give samples of what you want within your prompt. This is called few shot prompting as opposed to zero shot prompting where you don't give any examples like the prompts I've used up until now. A really practical way to use this is anytime you want ChatGPT to write something for you. Typically it does a pretty bad job out of the box and anyone reading it can instantly tell it was written by AI. But if you add some samples of your own writing or writing similar to what you want it to produce, it will greatly enhance the output. Although if you're doing that regularly, I'd recommend creating a custom GPT for it. I'll get into that later. Say I wanted to turn these bullet points from before into a blog article. Instead of just turn these bullet points into a blog, I'll add a sample of writing for it to imitate. And I'd actually break this up into multiple prompts. I'm providing a sample of my writing to help you understand my style. Please analyze this sample for tone, structure, and language use. Then once it's analyzed, write a blog post on the bullet points we created about artificial intelligence. Write it in my style. That will come back much better, and now it sounds like a person wrote it. For complex prompts or anything that involves the need for ChatGPT to use reasoning rather than just memorized knowledge, which is a lot, use the phrase think step by step. This is called chain of thought prompting and it's been shown to greatly improve its accuracy and reasoning skills. ChatGPT has gotten better at knowing when to use this on its own, but it's still helpful to add. Sometimes you'll just want to prompt it step by step yourself. If you ever have a prompt that includes multiple steps, it usually makes sense to break it up into multiple prompts, like how I did for that blog article rather than packing it all into one prompt. Once you have your response, here's a few of my favorite follow-up prompts. To make it more understandable, explain it like I'm five or explain it like I'm a high school student. Maybe we need an even simpler explanation of string theory. My favorite for retention is use an analogy. How about an analogy for fractional reserve banking? 
musical chairs sounds about right. Those two follow-ups can help to not only understand, but also to retain information. Another follow-up I use a lot is Steelman the Opposing Side. It depends what you're discussing, but this will have ChatGPT explain the other side of a topic as convincingly as possible. So say I'm asking about the benefits of open source AI. So this all sounds great, but it's only showing me the positives. I could say Steelman the Opposing Side. Now I'll be able to see the best arguments against it and better understand the full picture. A quick tip is you don't need to bother correcting your typos. ChatGPT can understand extremely jumbled text, although it's pretty hard for me to resist correcting them. A final tip is if you're ever stuck trying to think of the best way to write a prompt, just ask ChatGPT. What is the best way to prompt ChatGPT to teach it how to write in my style? Now, if you're doing more complex things than I covered here, like medical diagnosis, moral dilemmas, any complex reasoning, definitely go into the resources and read over things like tree of thought frameworks and program aided language models and watch AI explains video on his work with smart GPT that expands past chain of thought prompting with reflection and self dialogue. Super interesting, but doesn't apply to the general user, but some rabbit holes to go down for those that want them. There will be a bunch of resources down in the description. One of the most helpful is provided by HubSpot who sponsored this video. They have a free ChatGPT resource bundle. I'm covering a lot of features throughout this video, but there's only so far I can go into how to apply that knowledge. These resources go in depth onto how all of this can be applied to your career. There's five PDFs. One of those is how to supercharge your workday with ChatGPT. It covers specific examples of how ChatGPT can be used in different industries for sales and marketing, project management, enhanced decision-making and problem solving, time management and organization. It walks through step-by-step -step with different tips and even has a section titled 100 ways to try ChatGPT today. That has 100 sample prompts you can use and modify. No matter what career you have, there's sure to be a bunch in there that will apply to you. And that's just one of the resources in the bundle, which again is completely free. Just use the link in the description to go download that. I was happy to partner with HubSpot to add even more free resources for this video. Now for some quick features that get overlooked but can be really helpful. First is keyboard shortcuts. This isn't massive, but it can save a little time. Click on the question mark in the bottom right, then click keyboard shortcuts. Now it will show you a full list, or since we're talking about them, you can use command forward slash to get here as well. Now I only use a few of these, command shift O to open a new chat, command shift S to toggle the sidebar, and command shift C will copy the last response. That makes it easy to copy and paste into a separate note taking app, or maybe you're having it help draft an email or something. Those are the main ones I use, but you may want to use some of the others like command shift I for custom instructions so you can make quick modifications to them or copy last code block is helpful if you're coding. And just a quick housekeeping tip. I always try to rename my important chats that I may need to revisit. I also try to have the habit of deleting chats I know I won't need and periodically archiving others that I may want to reference later. To see chats you've archived, click on your name, settings, and beta. Then you'll see archived chats and can click manage to view them. Once a chat is archived, if you want to use this delete all chats button, it will delete everything but those archived chats. Hopefully they'll have a better form of organization one day. And next is the share feature. You can send a full chat to someone, maybe a spouse or a business partner. If I wanted to send this full conversation about the blog article over to like an editor, I'd click right here. I could change the title if I want to then copy link, then they'd be able to see this whole back and forth I had. The other way to do that, which is really helpful, you can actually drag the chat from the sidebar directly onto a notepad or another app, and it will have the title and a hyperlink to that chat history. And something I already demonstrated earlier is editing your prompt. After you've already generated something, you have the option to edit your prompt right here, then ChatGPT will regenerate an answer. Then you have the two options to compare right next to each other. You can get better at prompting this way by comparing the results, or sometimes it's just easier and faster to edit the original prompt rather than ask clarifying questions. One more is voice chat. I don't use this much personally, but I never use Siri or Alexa or take voice notes or really anything like that. I know some people like to interact this way though. On mobile, just click the microphone, then speak your question and ChatGPT will respond audibly as well. Tell me a bedtime story. Once upon a time, in a tranquil village nestled between whispering forests and gentle hills, lived a curious fox named Finley. You get the picture. 
Custom instructions are huge. They can improve ChatGPT's outputs and make them more relevant. And there's a couple really easy wins here that everyone should be using. Access them by clicking on your name, then custom instructions. This top box adds context about you into your prompts. The second box modifies the way ChatGPT responds. When you turn these on, they will give ChatGPT this information for every chat. That way you don't have to type out the context in each prompt. Instead of generic responses that are meant to apply to anyone, it will tailor responses specifically for you. With the top box, add what information you want ChatGPT to know about you. I keep mine fairly short. I used to have a really long one in here. I also tested out multiple different custom instructions personas that I would copy and paste depending on the task. I didn't find that particularly worthwhile. And now you can do something similar, but much better using custom GPTs. Then in the bottom box, you set the tone style and vocabulary you expect. This is where those really easy wins are. ChatGPT has the tendency to apologize or remind you it's a large language model, or it will regularly mention its knowledge cutoff, which is currently April of 2023, if you didn't know. If you tell it not to do those things in the custom instructions, it will stop. I also ask it to say it doesn't know if it doesn't have an answer in hopes that it will cut down on hallucinations a little bit. Another one is if I'm talking about something health or nutrition related, it will remind me in every response to consult with a professional or a doctor. That is super annoying. So I worded that a few different ways in here. And just generally, ChatGPT is overly verbose. Custom instructions can help cut out a lot of that really easily. I've overall trimmed down my custom instructions a lot over time. There's these long versions that have been passed around on Reddit and Twitter. They sound great in theory, but I've found in practice, you end up with some weird answers, especially to simple questions. You can turn them on and off easily or come up with different versions you can copy and paste in there depending on the situation. I've come to prefer just having a simple version that I can leave on all the time that applies to every chat. Of course, modify anything you agree or disagree with. Just experiment and add your own stuff in there. Anytime you get a weird quirk or type of response you don't like, see if you can fix it in custom instructions. I will have mine down in the description. You can copy and paste and use that as a base to build yours from. Everything so far applies to everyone, including free users, but we are moving into the features for plus users now. An incredibly useful update was Vision. I use Vision all the time, especially on mobile. This is a houseplant we have, and I forgot what kind. Boom. You could take a picture of a room and ask if there's a better way to organize. Or I'll try this. How can I make my background look cooler for future videos? A really useful thing to do is if something breaks around the house, upload a photo and have ChatGPT help instead of tracking down a YouTube video. Those are some easy practical uses. And once I got in the habit of just remembering it was there, I started to use it all the time. It's pretty amazing what it's able to do. I'll also link to this paper OpenAI released that covers a lot more use cases. A few of the most impressive are its ability to recognize landmarks from unusual angles, recognize complex food dishes, then give a recipe for them, understand medical imaging, understand jokes and memes, figure out complex diagrams, recognize emotions, or this one where it knew these were South Park characters. You get the picture, but there are hundreds of impressive examples in here. It's really interesting to go through. There's three features that used to be separate choices, but are now all usable anytime you select GPT-4. Dolly for image creation, web browsing, and code interpreter for things like data analysis. Those are all active anytime you're using GPT-4. It will utilize them whenever it feels necessary or relevant to the prompt. Web browsing is pretty straightforward. When you need ChatGPT to browse the internet, it will. That way you can get information past its knowledge cutoff when needed. Dolly 3 has some of the best prompt understanding out of any image generator to date. It's great at all sorts of different styles, and since it's built with ChatGPT's language comprehension, you can add tons of different details and it will get them all right, usually. I also like the conversational aspect. You can just mention things you liked or didn't like about the image using natural language. I don't like that each time you generate, even if you use the exact same prompt, it will come back with a very different image. But here's some examples of how good Dolly 3 can be with prompt understanding. ChatGPT has amazing capabilities with data analysis using Code Interpreter. You can upload all sorts of different file types, PDF, text, JSON, Java, zip, just many more. And you can have it analyze the data and draw conclusions, analyze trends, create graphs, and visualize them. It's a really powerful feature. I'll just show a simple example. I'll start by uploading a file. This is a CSV, but I don't actually have to unzip it first. There's no title on it, so I'll give it a little context. This data represents the 
color distribution of Sour Patch Kids across different packs. This is a random data set I found on Kaggle. Apparently someone counted how many of each color were in each pack of Sour Patch Kids for 60 packs. ChatGPT automatically knows to use Code Interpreter for this, and it looks like it understands what the file is. It's always good to make sure before you start asking questions. And you can have it clean the data to find any missing values or inconsistencies. This one was fine, so I'll just ask if it noticed anything interesting. All right, now this is where it gets really powerful. It can display this information in all sorts of different formats. I'll ask it for a few. So we've got a bar plot, box plot, line plot, heat map, histogram, and a pie chart. So you can see how many possibilities there are for data visualization to this and how they may apply to your career or life. In this case, the pie chart is the most relevant. Looks like Sour Patch Kids are loading up their packs with extra reds. We may need to launch a full-scale study to see if we can replicate these findings. Plugins were really hyped when they launched, but the hype died off when people started to use them and realized that 90% of them weren't very useful. There were a few that I liked and used, but with the introduction of GPTs and the recently added ability to call those GPTs in any chat, the few useful plugins there were are no longer necessary. All of that can be done with GPTs now. Anyone that built a plugin has built that same functionality into a GPT. I'm guessing they'll actually just remove plugins altogether at some point. That brings us to the biggest update, custom GPTs. To get to them, just click Explore GPTs on the sidebar near the top. A lot of these that are built by companies are honestly just a less user-friendly way to use their product, but the fact that you can call them within chats and stack functionalities across a bunch of different tools now starts to become really powerful. I'll show you some examples of that near the end. This is one step closer to agents, but overall there is a ton to sift through in here. I wanna quickly show just a really useful and easy to use one. This can create cool diagrams with flowcharts and mind maps. So I'll find it using the search bar or whimsical diagrams. Then it starts a new chat with it. You can type in here or what will tend to be more common with one like this. If you're in the middle of a chat like this one about how LLMs are trained, um, I want help visualizing that. So I'll use the at symbol and select it. Then I'll say, show me that as a mind map. And it will ask me to approve. Then pretty quickly, it has this awesome mind map created. Then there's a link that will take you to the site where you can edit it further if you'd like. This is a really cool one. And once you start experimenting and just finding different GPTs that apply to you, it just opens up a whole world of possibilities. And as a side note, if you're actually interested in how LLMs are trained and how they work, Andrei Karpathy's video is by far the best intro to that topic I've come across. Sorry for the pronunciation. There's a lot of cool GPTs already built, but let's build one of our own. I'll start off really simple. So I have a three-year-old and he loves to color. And for a while, I've been using Midjourney to create coloring book pages for him. I have a few prompts saved and just switch a couple words around and let it generate. That does work well, but with a custom GPT, I can make it even easier. So I'll do this conversationally at first before showing how to customize these and build them from scratch. I just click create up here an image generator that only generates coloring book pages for children. It has the preview on the other side as we build. Just from that, it would actually probably be usable already. Under configure, it's already filled in these fields. It also suggested a title. I want something a little more imaginative. That's good. Now it's generating a profile picture and that's perfect. And now it's asking about the interaction style. So I went through a couple back and forths here. It was all easy stuff, so I wanted to speed it up. Basically, I was just telling it to keep everything simple and kid-friendly, then asked it to act like a creative friend. So now we can test it out. Um, I want to make sure it works with as little input as possible, so I'll just write a dinosaur. And that's a really solid dinosaur, and it has a fun description. The emojis are a nice touch. But I want it to be simpler since my son is only three. All right, now it's updated, so I'll give it another try. All right, that's great. I wanna try one that's a little more complex and see how it does. A bear driving a race car through a forest. All right, that one ended up with some color. I thought it would have been implied by calling it a coloring book page, but I'll ask it to make sure it only generates in black and white. All right, now I'll try again. That is amazing. This is already done. I could just click save right now, but let's look at the configure tab to see what it did here. So it has the title and a brief description. That's what will show up to other users if you make it public. And it has the instruction for what it does. 
These are short because this one was pretty simple, but it guides how the images will be created with the constraints and how it will interact in a fun way. And for the conversation starters, I want to make some changes here so they're more interactive in case he doesn't have an idea. List some themes to choose from, some characters, settings, then surprise me. That should be fun. And we didn't need to upload anything to the knowledge base, but this is where you can upload additional files for your GPT to use as context. Things like a tutorial, transcripts, or writing samples. And the only capability we really needed is Dolly for image generation, but it left web browsing on. Generally, it makes sense to leave on any that you think it may use. Doesn't really hurt. Then action is where you could interact with other applications through APIs. That's where these can get really powerful, but also more complex. You can go find existing APIs you can use or use one from your business if you have one, then convert it into an open API schema to paste in here. That's beyond the scope of this video. There's also people that cover it better than I would. I don't have a development background. Liam Otley is one person I saw cover that pretty in depth. If you're looking to build GPTs to make money with once they launch the monetization features, that will be the only way to stand out. Otherwise, someone can just look at the functions of your GPT and create it themselves. I'm going to save this one and just keep it for me. You could also make it accessible to anyone with the link or fully public. A very important note is if you are building one of these to make public, all the information made available to the GPT that includes the prompt, the instructions, and attached files, it can be used by the model to construct a response to the user. So just don't include any information you don't want the user to know. There was also a hack going around of a prompt you could use to extract the full custom instructions. I just don't put any confidential info into these. Um, but here's the one I just made. I want to test out these conversation starters. All right, and that gave a great list of characters to choose from. I can almost guarantee he would choose robot. And there it is. That's perfect. And I want to test out that surprise me too. All right, and that's great. All I have to do is open this up and just let him click a button and it'll generate. Another thing kind of cool here is on my phone, I'll be able to use voice and have him just say what he wants into it. Then it will make it for him and then also say those fun descriptions out loud. I think this will be pretty fun. This was all created in just a few minutes from a short conversation that anyone could have had. I know a lot of us have gotten used to how far AI has come, but when I stop and think about this, it's really insane how easy that was. So if you regularly use ChatGPT for any specific thing like coding, writing, brainstorming, or topics like fitness, nutrition, things like that. If it needs information about you or knowledge only you have, you can create a GPT, then call it into any chat instead of having to use a complex prompt each time. A common example would be for writing. Instead of giving examples using the few shot prompting method from earlier, you could upload your examples into the knowledge base and instructions of a GPT. Then anytime you want to write something, just call it and it will write in your style. Then for things that don't require your own knowledge or resources, there's probably already one made that you can test out. There's hundreds of thousands of these built already. And again, you can start stacking this functionality on top of each other. I want to show a few examples of people doing that. This calling feature just came out a few days ago, so I haven't started building out any systems myself quite yet, mainly because I've been working on this video. But here's a few really cool ones I saw on Twitter. So this is Pietro Shirano creating an app using Grimoire, which is one of the most popular GPTs. So it creates all the code for a website about a coffee shop in New York City specialized in Italian coffee. Then he sends all that code to Designer GPT, which will launch and host the site. And I'll skim through this one, but Zaddy uses Academic Paper Finder that finds papers about smart contract auditing. Then he uses Ask Your PDF Research Assistant to download and explain a couple of them. Then uses Literature Review Writer to write a literature review using the contents of both papers. So then it writes a review and cites the references. You would, of course, want to do more fact checking and due diligence for something like this. I'm just trying to demo some of the functionality. Ryan Carson created a chief product officer, chief financial officer, and investor to be able to call and interact with at any time. Building GPTs with different knowledge sets about your business, then almost reading them like different employees, like a marketing specialist, sales associate, customer service representative, designer, things like that, and then just calling them anytime you need them could be really helpful. You would, of course, want to be careful with what information you're sharing with ChatGPT, but it's a cool idea. And Dan Shipper built this Notion GPT that uses Zapier to 
connect directly to his Notion. So he can save things from ChatGPT into his Notion workspace instead of having to copy and paste. There's a ton of different ways, especially building things into a tool like Zapier that can connect all of your different apps can be really, really powerful. I'm sure people will be coming up with a lot more really cool stuff with this, but more importantly is to figure out ways that you can apply it to your own career and life. And if you liked this video, you will probably also like futurepedia.io. It's constantly up to date with all the latest and greatest AI tools. You can browse the database by category or search and find the best AI tools for your needs. Then save your favorites right to your profile. You can also get AI news and tutorials delivered directly to your inbox with the free newsletter. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.